Hey, I'm Mark Romanak, and you're watching Fishing 411. This week, we traveled all the way to Milwaukee, Wisconsin to sample some of their spring brown trout fishing. Let's see if we can get some in the boat. Milwaukee, Wisconsin area. And Milwaukee Harbor has got a lot of water to fish. We're actually on the outside of the harbor right now from the way the wind is blowing. It's a little calmer outside the harbor. But you can also fish inside the harbor. It's about three miles long. So there's a ton of water here. It's got great brown trout fishing. And you know what? Not a lot of people realize how good the fishing is here. Buzz, how come your side of the boat's out fishing my side? That's I tell you what, know. I'm going to control the boat. I know all I had to do was say that. <laughs> Hand of the rod to me. <laughs> Ooh, brown trout. I'm telling you what. <laughs> I haven't fished Milwaukee since the 70s. <laughs> the last time I was here, and I did catch a brown trout. Well, you're about to uh, <laughs> to see a special thing here, because not only are you going to get that on a maglip, you're going to get that fish uh, on another presentation we'll talk about here in a second. I don't want to jinx this, but, uh, but that fish really grabbed it hard. Oh man, you're here already, aren't you? Oh yeah. Ooh, it's a big one. Let me get underneath you here, Buzz. Oh, that's, that's a big fish. Wow. Beautiful brown. You're gonna have to just step back a little bit. Oh, come on, baby, a little closer. Oh man, you get a little leaf out of him there. <laughs> that's Try what again. happens when you hit him with a net. <laughs> come on, puppy. He's a, a fighter. Whoa! All of a sudden, he decided to wake up, didn't he? He saw you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Here we go. Spin this way, baby. There we go. That's the fish. The net job wasn't beautiful, but I tell you what, the fish is going to make up for that. Oh, look how fat they are. That is a big brown right there. And i got to do a little boat control here because we're kind of up gonna against hit, the rocks hit the here. Wall. But, uh, Wow. Oh, baby, look I'm how happy. bad he is. Buzz, man. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Here, real quick. Look so how girthy this baby is. Now, that's <laughs> pretty typical for the browns that they catch here. And believe it or not, Buzz, they actually catch them much bigger. Um, they don't get too concerned about fish the size. They're looking for 20 pounders. Really? Now, I haven't caught one that big here. Um, yeah. But that would certainly be a goal. And they tell me, the local bait shop is telling me, uh, the fishing hole is that during the wintertime, usually at least one a week over 20 pounds they weigh. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, and I guess that one probably in that nine to 10 pound range right there. Yeah. This is about the size of the one I caught uh, in the 70s last time I was here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna let this baby go, so I'm gonna get him right back in the water here. There he goes. Wow. Like a shot. You know, there's a couple of ways we're going to catch these fish today. We're going to get them on planer boards, long lining crankbaits, the mag lift straight out behind the planer board. But that first fish came on a flat line. It's something kind of unique. We've got a 3.0 mag lift here. And then I got about a six foot leader. And then here at the business end, I've got a fish flash. This is a four inch big owl fish flash. It's just an attractor. It spins in the water. And then our weight to get it down is a tadpole diver. And we ran these straight off the back. And the reason I wanted to do this is this allows us to fish the bottom. And then our crankbaits on planer boards are fishing the suspended fish. So we're covering the entire water column. Now back where I come from, that would be a dandy. 
Actually, <laughs> I'm not going to describe that as a dandy. It's a pretty decent brown trout, but not by the standards they have here. If you get anything 20 inches or more, that's pretty good, pretty nice brown trout. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to let him go right away. There's no sense even handling this fish. So I'm just going to grab a hold of the, the hook, if he cooperates here, and shake him off. Just like that, and away he goes. Our guest on this week's episode is Buzz Ramsey from Yakima Bait, and Buzz actually designed the lures we caught these brown trout on, particularly the maglip. The 3.0 and the 3.5 are lights out when it comes to catching brown trout, no matter where you find them. So the thing about a fish flash is because of the triangular shape, you can hook it right to the end of your diver, whether you're using a, you know, a dipsy or, or uh, any kind of diver, this little tadpole diver here. So I've got my fish flash right on the end of it. It spins fine and attracts fish in because of its triangular shape. And then because the water is dirty, uh, I've got a chartreuse and silver because we've got some sunlight out here, chartreuse and silver fish flash. And then I've combined it with this, uh, with this colored uh, flatfish, so they're similar colors, uh, and because chartreuse works the best in dirty water, that's what we're using. Additional considerations provided by Lowrance Electronics. Find, navigate, dominate. Additional considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Trolling without a fishhawk is called boating. Well, as commonly found with spring brown trout fishing, we're going to be trolling with planer boards and we're going to be trolling with crankbaits. Specifically, the crankbait we're going to use today is something called a maglip. It's made by Yakima. It comes in several sizes. But we're probably going to catch most of our action today on the 3.0 and the 3.5. But without planer boards, we'd be dead in the water today. You really got to spread your lines out. We're fishing in clear water. And without planer boards, we just simply could not get after these spooky browns. That's a good fish right there. They up the board. Oh, yeah. That's a good fish right there. <laughs> Yeah, baby. I love it. He's running. He's running. He's fighting. <laughs> Spring brown trout. You know, this is not for wussies, is it? It's pretty cold out here today. Pretty nasty, it's bumpy and wavy. I'm it sure you get fun. some nice days this time of year, though. I'm hoping we get some nice days before this is all said and done. <laughs> How are we doing on speed? We're just perfect. Everything's just really good here right now. I think it, you know, this one six speed is that this is kind of really a nice, it's fast enough to get good action on our lures, but slow enough that we can get bites in this super cold water. You know, the water's only 40 degrees today, so. Right. Can't, you know, I don't think we could get away with two, two and a half miles an hour. I don't think we get bit at that speed. Right. But yeah, in these waves, it's hard to control at that slow speed. They're going to be pretty sluggish, a little sluggish this time of year, I guess. But this is when they're here, cold water brown trout. It's all yours, Buzz. It's always exciting. It's always fun fishing with Buzz Ramsey. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Whoa, where is that fish at? He he's trying like to get in our other line. Yeah, I hope he doesn't. If we keep out near the surface, we'll be all right. Well, I think he's okay. He's coming in now. All right, now we're talking. A little bit more control over him now. Look how big this baby is. Oh, side. you can swing him to that side over there. Buzz, that would be the, the ideal right, scenario. He's hooked in the left side of his left oh, side. yeah. He's giving us a, a tussle here. Straight up, Buzz. Straight up with the rod if you can. Hang on, hang on. Oh, looks can like he's going to come around. Look at that. He's going to come around when we want him. Wow, that's a big brown. Oh, yeah, Buzz, baby. you are the man. <laughs> Look at that fish. Look at that. Look at that. That's almost. Gosh. Half is getting bigger than the one we caught earlier. And he just ate that maglip. He just ate it. A payday colored maglip got this one. <laughs> this is uh, a Milwaukee brown trout fishing. This is Milwaukee brown trout fishing at its finest in the spring when they're everywhere. <laughs> well, Buzz, one of the things I want to talk to you about, you know, we've been fishing maglip for a couple years now and they're just tearing up trout and salmon. But I've never seen a crankbait be eaten from the head end. Usually when you catch you know, trout and salmon on crankbaits, it's the back hook that's doing the, right. the real work. Right. We catch so many fish like this where they got both hooks in their mouth. They're crushing this bait. They're just trying to eat it. I think it, that, you know, this is a, at least one theory, one thought is that they take it deeper because of the skip lead action, because the plug is wiggling and darting around so frantically 
that they take it more viciously because they think it's going to try to get away. We notice it out on the west coast with trout and steelhead and salmon. They take the plug deeper, they're hooked better, more vicious strikes. How much do you think this fish weighs? I'm going to guess north of 10, maybe as high as 12. Well, he's got the girth for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fits. He fits. <laughs> he fits. That's, what, that's all we care about. He fits. It's going to make for some nice fillets. That's an excellent fish. Well, we're getting a good mix of fish now. We're getting some fish on the planer boards with the maglip, which I anticipated. We're also getting some fish on the flat lines. If this was a little smoother in here and we had better boat control, I can't even imagine how well we'd be doing. Um, but it's just a, you know, a challenge to stay off the rocks here. So we get a fish hooked up. And by the time we get that fish landed, we're way off our spot. Then we got to go back and set up and kind of come through our spot again. So it's a little stressful, if you will. Um, but man, the browns are awesome. They're huge. And I think we're going to have a great day. You know, Milwaukee is famous for beer, but it really ought to be famous for brown trout because there's not very many places in the country where you can go and catch the numbers or the quality of brown trout that we demonstrated on this episode. Brown trout in Milwaukee, they go hand in hand. You know, most of the time when you're looking for spring browns, it's really about water temperature. Um, we're looking for the warmest available water. And there's several warm water sources here in the Milwaukee area. There's creeks that come in here in Milwaukee Harbor that are bringing warm water in. You go a little bit south of here and there's a place called Oak Creek. And there's a power plant there that has a warm water discharge. Of course, that's gonna be a good place to target them as well. And you go a little further south down the Racine, which is only about 12 or 15 miles from here, and they have another power plant and they have another warm water discharge. So if you come to the Milwaukee area, you have actually three three different geographic areas you can fish and you can get on a multitude of fish. Not just brown trout, but there's going to be coho, there's going to be some steelhead, and of course if you get real lucky, you might even get a king salmon. He just came off. He just came off. Additional considerations provided by Procure, ruthlessly effective bait suds. Additional considerations provided by the Ultimate Sports Show Tour, Michigan's premier sports shows. When it comes to pieces of gear that are important for open water crankbait trolling, at the top of the list are inline planer boards. If you don't have inline planer boards, you're just not going to be successful out here. You have to have boards to get your lines out to the side. A piece of equipment that we add to our planer boards is also important, and it's called the tattle flag. You can say this, this flag system is operating on a spring system, it's articulated. It folds down when we catch a fish. Well, why is that important? Well, we're fishing in rough water out here, and we're going very, very slowly. So in order to detect our bites, it's an important piece of equipment to have a tattle flag. Now, new for 2017, Offshore has improved their tattle flags. When you take a look at the flag stem, you'll notice that there's a little tab on it now, and there's four additional holes in that tab. What that does is it gives us more spring tension adjustment settings. If you're one of those guys who've been pulling big deep diving crankbaits like reef runners and been frustrated because your flag folds down all the time when you're trolling big crankbaits, now you have the spring adjustment settings that you can you know, you can set it just to the right tension for whatever crankbait you happen to be trolling. <clears throat> In other words, the flag stays up when you want it, and when a fish bites, the flag goes down. It doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, baby! Fish flash this time. <laughs> we'll go down here in the corner. Wow. Because what did I tell you? This corner right here oh, is, just, is just red hot. Wow. That's a nice fish right there. Oh, he's big. Oh, he's pounding. <laughs> he's pounding. Gaining any ground in this guy is going to be fun, fun, fun. Woo. Look at that. I'm not gaining an inch on this fish. It's a stalemate right now. Oh, yes. Oh, the quality of these fish is what blows me away. Lots of places you can get browns, but not like this. Look at the size of that thing. I'll back up and let you grab the net, Buzz. He's kind of twisted a little bit on me. Yeah. So if I can try to keep him up on this upward side here. Hey. He's a fighter. Let's see if he wants to cooperate now. Are we ready, team? Here he comes. Look at that. 
Hang on. <laughs> a reverse net job? Yeah. Scoop one of those. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Buzz. <laughs> that was the reverse net job. <laughs> I'll tell you what. It's a small bag net. The other bit, a bigger net we used yesterday, the, 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 the hooks on the crankbaits kept getting caught in it. So we yeah. decided to go to the rubber net. Almost caught <laughs> Well, that, oh, that jointed flatfish has three, three hooks in it. So. <laughs> Buzz, they're getting bigger and bigger, man. They, this is unbelievable. <laughs> now, you just introduced me to a product I've never fished before. This is a flatfish, which I've fished a lot, but never a jointed flatfish. Yeah. And, uh, and this happened to be on your side. I just grabbed the rod because it was hammering there. You did the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of stole your fish, but man, oh man. Again, we just ran that fish flash in front of it to give it a little bit more you know, attraction, yeah. pull them into the rig, and, uh, and brown trout wonderland. I have no idea how much this fish weighs, but we are getting some quality crowns today. These are beauties. Well, we kind of had to make a move. The wind is switching on us, and it's really coming from northeast right now, and it's pushing all this rough water from Lake Michigan right up against the pierheads that we were fishing. And the fish are still there, but it's just getting to be very difficult to control the boat. But the beauty of Milwaukee is that inside these harbors, there's all kinds of protected water. So no matter which way the wind's coming, you can always find some place to fish. So we just relocated inside the harbor. The second way we caught these fish was on a 3.5 maglip, and that's a crankbait that I have in my hand right here. We fished them behind planer boards. In order to determine how deep they were diving, we were manipulating our lead lengths, and we were using the Precision Trolling Data app to be able to tell us how much line we had to let out to get to the target depth. Most of the fish we were catching were 15 to 25 feet down. If you're not familiar with the Precision Trolling Data app, essentially what it does, it's an app that tells you how deep lures like this crankbait are gonna fish below the surface, depending on how much line you let out and what line diameter you're fishing with and also what speed you're trolling at. Fish on, fish on. <laughs> what you got? This is another fish on already? Like. Holy smoke, oh, that's, a mini. Oh, that's a, one that we can handle without that? He's a mini brown. <laughs> a mini one, I'm gonna just grab the leader and help him. Huh? That. Now, I tell no, you what, if you hold that leader, I'll get you a player players okay. and we'll snap him off right over yeah, the side we'll of the boat. Yeah, we'll let him go. He'll cooperate. That's what we wanted. All right. Catching him faster than we can get lines in the water right now. Additional considerations provided by Motor Guide, engineered for anglers. A board fish. Look at that. <laughs> It's been about equal mix here between fish that we've been catching on the flat lines with the fish flash and fish that we've been catching on the planer boards with maglip. It's a beautiful thing any way you look at it. Any way you look at it. What we did is we relocated to one of the inner harbors and we're actually going right up into a river mouth here. And uh, our locals tell us that we can catch fish right up in this river mouth, so we're going to give it a try. And uh, so far, so good. What's another brown? It's just a smaller one. I didn't think there was any small ones. <laughs> you know, it's weird because normally I would net a fish like this and never even think twice about it, but that's almost like I'm not even going to bother with the landing net considering how small that fish is. Oops. Oh, no. Now I think we got a problem. No. Fish on? I think we got a fish on both rods. Let me just see if this is, let me just see if this, if this is what I think it is. I'm not getting any, this is kind of a weird sensation here. I'm not getting a head shake yet. I might have just picked up some debris on the bottom. No, that's a, that's not a hitch. <laughs> you got two on at once, Mark? two on at once. You got two on at once? <laughs> Yay! Oh, goodness. Now, I don't know what we're going to do here. This little one here is just dragging there. I guess we can just leave him drag for a minute. It's not hurting sure. him. He's getting some fresh He's water. He's having fun. And, uh, <laughs> my goodness. This is definitely a better fish than, uh, than I just caught. So let's get an eyeball on him and see if it's another brown. So far, it's all been browns, but I know there's lake trout in here. And we also know that there's coho in here. So this looks to me like another brown. Wow, that's another big one. We're gonna probably need to land on this one. That's okay. what I'm thinking. That was the game plan. He decided he didn't like that too much. We'll walk him all the way up. Ooh. 
Well, I knocked that one off. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's all right. I'm not too concerned about it. We've caught so many fish today. Uh, we we're going to release him anyway. <laughs> you got that right. That's exactly what we're going to do. And uh, the combination of these soft rods and these longer leaders that we're using, I just couldn't quite back up far enough to give you a good shot. Yeah, him, so. I thought he was going to fall right in there, but he did not. <laughs> <laughs> and typically the hook hung and well, he was gone. We can't complain. No, he was. We that can't was, complain. Because that was we, all right. Because we still got one on the other rod. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to net that one? No, I think we'll just. I think I'll just shake this guy off at the boat here. Okay. We'll just shake this guy off at the boat here. No, that's not a bad brown trout, but by today's standards, what we've been catching, that's a puppy. Yeah. Oh, man, we've been getting some. You know, I'd have been happy to get. 10 fish like this today. I think that's the smallest one we've caught. So what a beautiful, he's in great shape. So I'm just gonna let him go right over the side. And here he goes. Like a jack, right out of there. All right, Buzz is into Come another one. to Papa. <laughs> Lake trout. Lake trout? It's like, no, it's, no, a, big it's brown. a brown. What a big brown. Ooh. He hit that uh, jointed flatfish. Oh, I see. Second one on that. Oh, beautiful fish, man. Beautiful fish. Look at that. Woo. It just popped out of his mouth. That's <laughs> another big one. <laughs> there's the brown and there's the lure a bit. You snuck one in on me, Buzz. I knew that you were using the uh, the jointed flatfish, but this is not the one you caught the last fish on. You put no, I switched, I switched colors. I just thought, well, let's try another one, see if they like them. Apparently they do. They like that too. That's called watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I'll tell you what, it definitely put another good fish in the boat for We're us. We're going to let this baby go. Yeah, I think so. we got plenty for, the, for right now for what we want to eat, so I think we can go ahead and let him go. You know, one of the cool things about fishing in Milwaukee is it is a metropolitan area. We're literally staying in downtown Milwaukee. It's a gorgeous place. Most people wouldn't think you'd come to a cityscape like this and enjoy such great fishing. But we showed you that there's great fishing to be had right downtown in Milwaukee. Closed captioning is provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, your leaders in trolling technology. Yakima Bait, home of the rooster tail. Evinroot Outboards, introducing the E-Tech G2. Starcraft Marine, America's oldest aluminum fishing boat line. Jay's Sporting Goods, trust in the tradition. Cisco Fishing Systems, fish the finest. Smooth moves, smooth your ride. Precision trolling data. The Troller's Bible now available in an app. Real work, real like crazy. <laughs> See, he's still there. Is he there? Nope. Nope. All that. Give him plenty of time to get away. <laughs> <laughs>